Hello and welcome to the modeling of the spread of COVID-19 for New Jersey and Texas. I am Nima Eskindari, graduate electrical engineering student at the University of Houston. COVID-19 or Coronavirus Disease 2019 has taken over the world. It has shut down schools, businesses, and entire governments. Over 1.3 million confirmed cases, along with over 76,000 deaths, has been reported worldwide. In the U.S. alone, over 367,000 confirmed cases, along with over 11,000 deaths, have been reported. In the U.S., New York, with 130,000 confirmed cases, and New Jersey, with 41,000 confirmed cases, were hit the hardest. Texas, my home state, was also affected with over 7,000 confirmed cases and over 140 deaths. Creating a model to predict the spread of the virus is very important. It can help with determining how dire the situation can become and what actions must be taken. Data is available publicly through various sources, and using the data, one can model the spread of the virus and evaluate how well the model and the algorithm actually performs. In order to model the spread of COVID-19, we use the SIR model. The SIR model is a simple model which consists of three states susceptible, infected, and recovered. This model is able to predict the transmission of disease from human to human. This model also confers lasting resistance, meaning once recovered, you cannot become susceptible again. If lasting resistance is, resistance is not conferred, SIRS model can be used. Here is a graph of the number of confirmed cases for New Jersey, with the last day corresponding to March 28th. As you can see, there is almost 7,000 confirmed cases. Here is a graph for Texas. The number of confirmed cases for the last day, which corresponds to March 28th, is near 1,600 cases. The number of infected individuals in the SIR model follows a Poisson distribution. The distribution's expected value is shown in the equation in the slide. The expected value, or lambda, is dependent on Number of days a person is contagious, number of infected individuals entering the population, the number of confirmed cases for each day, the probability that when a susceptible person is in contact with an infected individual that they will actually catch the virus, and the constant RE, which is calculated through maximum likelihood. Using maximum likelihood, the constant RE can be estimated. RE depends on the number of days since the start of the outbreak, that is the whole number of days that is available, the data is available for, the number of confirmed cases, the number of infected individuals entering the population, the probability that when a susceptible person is in contact with an infected individual that they will actually catch the virus, and the number of days a person is contagious. For COVID-19, the following parameters were used. A person is contagious for approximately 14 days. This is a number reported by the CDC. Also, the chances of infection that once a person infected is in contact with someone who has COVID-19, is set to 85%. We got this number by speaking to physicians. These two numbers are set to be constant 
in our algorithm. For future work, these two numbers can also be estimated. Not only that, but instead of using one constant value, for example, for the, num for the number of days a person is contagious, or the chances that a person in contact with someone who has COVID-19 actually will catch the virus can actually be a raise that changes for every day a person is contagious. For example, in this case, if the number of days a person is contagious is 14, the chances of transmitting this disease can actually be an array with 14 parameters and they can all be estimated so that the model can fit the data better. This graph shows for the data that we do have available, the number of confirmed cases versus the predictions made by our model. As you can see, we have the data for every day in this graph and we can actually graph our predictions versus the number of confirmed cases that we have data for. In the graph you see that the number of predicted cases is actually very close to the number of infections that are confirmed and that we have data for. Also you'll see that the number of predictions is larger than the number of cases reported. This is good because it shows that the gap between the number of predicted cases and the number of confirmed cases could be due to lack of testing. If our number of predictions were actually lower than the number of confirmed cases, that's when we have an issue because um, in that case, our model is actually underestimating the number of confirmed cases. Using our model, we're able to do a 10-day prediction for the number of infections that we will see for New Jersey. As you can see, doing a 10-day prediction, we have estimated almost 60,000 cases of COVID-19. This was done up till April 7th. On April 7th, we actually checked the number of confirmed cases reported by New Jersey, and that number was approximately 44,000 confirmed cases. Our prediction is still overestimating the number of confirmed cases, but the two numbers are actually very close. We followed the same pattern and used the same model to estimate the number of confirmed uh, number of infections for Texas. Here is the graph for all the days that we do have data for. And as you can see, the number of predictions is over 2,000 cases, while the number of confirmed cases reported by Texas is approximately 1,600. We followed the same model and used it for Texas to do a 10-day prediction of the number of people infected with the coronavirus. The last day for the prediction was April 7th. And at the end of these 10-day predictions, we got the number of approximately 8,800 uh, cases of infection. While when checking the data for April 7th, in Texas, there was approximately 7,900 confirmed cases reported. We are overestimating by approximately 1,000 people. For future work, the predictions for the 10 days after we have data can be improved as if data is fed to the model on a day-by-day -day basis. And the RE hat constant is re-estimated using maximum likelihood. Here are some references that we used for this study. Thank you so much for watching.